In today's news, am I salty about the SEC appealing XRP once again? Yes, a little bit. I mean, can you blame me? Of course I am. It's very frustrating as a crypto investor, as an XRP holder, to know that our money, taxpayers' money, is being completely and utterly wasted on a losing battle. The SEC has claimed time and time again that the laws are clear, but as Paul Gruel states here, if the law is clear, then why, oh why, would they need to ask an appellate court to clarify things? They shouldn't. So, by all means, bring on the Second Circuit and let them confirm for all intents and purposes that token trades on secondary markets are not investment contracts. And when you think about it, really think about it, it's kind of comical the SEC is doing this. It's not like they've had a lot of success going this route, going to seek the Second Circuit Court appeals. As Stuart Old Rossi states here, some of his favourite quotes the last time the SEC went this route against Goville. Firstly, and finally the best one in my opinion, straight up, we do not agree with the SEC. Plain and simple, they said that. Secondly, we are not persuaded by the SEC's arguments. And finally, the SEC's counter-arguments are unavailing. They did not have any support whatsoever, so for this time being, I can't imagine it be anything different this time around because Ripple and XRP have got their verdict. It's quite clear to me. All lawyers as well, they are now speaking up on this case, all in support of Ripple and XRP, mainly because, again, Ripple, the verdict, has already been decided last year. And for this reason that Jeremy Hogan here believes that the SEC has now effectively just signed their own death warrant, that this appeal is a massive blunder to them. If it literally changes nothing, it makes it worse for them, if anything. Big mistake by the SEC, as appealing the programmatic sale decision made last year and winning it would result in receiving more money from Ripple while ultimately still protecting no one, which is meant to be the primary role, keep in mind, they're meant to be protecting investors, not trying to get more money off people. To which then Ripple will raise its Blue Sky Law issue and if that wins, the SEC's ability to regulate the entire crypto space is essentially destroyed. They're risking a lot for this. They're risking a lot to get more money off Ripple. That's the point of this. The point being the SEC is also very, very likely to lose based on the clear warning from Judge Torres last year that the pragmatic sale of XRP did not constitute as an unregistered security offering. All the SEC is fighting for right now is more money from Ripple, which is also them spending more taxpayers' money to get more money from Ripple. It's a weird paradox and it's making no sense to me. But that is what this appeal is regarding. That's what they're trying to fight for. More money. That's all it is. Coincidentally, after Bitwise filed for an ETF, the SEC appealed the decision but they didn't appeal the decision made last year. They only appealed the fine and monetary aspect of the August 24th ruling, not the security status right now. So this actually is very bullish for XRP as it effectively means that the SEC has now recognized or at least they're not gonna argue anymore. They can't argue prevent XRP anymore. All they can do is just take more money from Ripple while wasting more of ours. But they can't argue XRP is a security when clearly it's been told that it's not. And that also therefore explains why Bitwise filed for an ETF because it's clear, why Robin Hood relisted XRP because it's clear, and why Grayscale now has an XRP trust because XRP is not a security, that is fact. And while yes, we are still frustratingly waiting for the final verdict. What will happen next, we still are waiting for. Plain and simply put, the decision is final and XRP's takeover is inevitable. And their victory could and will likely be one that will kickstart its adoption for crypto in America, which is why I believe the next 12 months, the next year, will be life-changing for you early crypto investors, early XRP investors, which is why I recently created a free-to-join Discord server. 360 of us right now are working towards achieving financial freedom every day and we are growing more knowledge and power so by all means, come and be a part of the family. Link to join will be in the description below. But now, in continuation for us XRP holders, here is the rough timeline of how this lawsuit could potentially play out, how long I have to wait effectively. The SEC will stall for time, repeatedly time and time again, till roughly early 2025 next year. Ripple will likely then cross appeal. We will then see opposition briefs and a bit of back and forth until roughly March 2025, more time wasting, and ultimately this case may not reach a final conclusion, a final verdict, a final ruling, that will likely be handed down to the Second Circuit until 2026, January 2026 to be the best case scenario. So potentially a year and a quarter to a year and a half from here, which is mental and it's very frustrating to hear that. And that doesn't take into account the additional time that may come into fruition should this case go to the Supreme Court. As you can see here, Frederick Poli states here that it could be an extra one to two years if it goes to the Supreme Court. So, is XRP going to be left in limbo forever despite the clear favourable ruling for XRP not being a security? We have to wait and see, of course. Maybe. But also maybe not. A new congressional law can make this whole thing go away, or if Donald Trump gets in power with his adamant stance on firing Gary Gensler on day one, that could also result in the case ending much quicker. To which we can hear in this interview here a little bit about this on CNBC, if a new chair, SEC chair, comes in, we might see a very different direction taken. Take a listen. And one thing to remember about the SEC, the chair controls the agenda. You know, each minority commissioner has five staffers, the chair 
has about 5,000. So in order to get anything done, it has to be done with the chair's approval. So the only thing the other commissioners do is they get to vote on things, but that's about it. So if a new chair comes in, we might see a very different direction. Now, Kamala Harris could also relieve Gary Gensler as SEC chairman, but it's much more of a gray area with her, mainly because her focus doesn't seem to be, you know, all on crypto or a lot on crypto like Donald Trump's is, or at least nowhere near as much as Donald Trump's is. So therefore, we don't know what happened with Kamala Harris, but if Donald Trump gets in power, then Gary Gensler is most definitely gone. So the way I see it, as frustrating as I am with Gary Gensler and the SEC, the future is still set for XRP. XRP in due time will be hoarded into a set of nodes that will be the most god of financial pools of digital assets the world has ever seen. And we are privileged, lucky enough, to be here early before institutions, before the XRP ETS, before the RLUSD and the takeoff of XRP. To which we have the interview here from Ripple CEO Brad Garnerhouse explaining how RUSD stablecoin will be a key factor to bring liquidity to the XRP ledger, which will inevitably help XRP's adoption and therefore price going forward. Take a close listen. You also talk about the lawsuit as well. Uh, two things come to mind, like big, big events. I'll save the bigger one for the second. But, you know, look, I, I think the stablecoin effort is a really important one. And I, I think Ripple has always taken the view that anything we can do that is good for the XRP ledger, we're going to lean into. Bringing liquidity to the XRP ledger is good for everyone in the community. And anytime I read it online or just somebody you know, saying that Ripple somehow isn't committed to the XRP ledger, I just think that they, they totally are missing it. Like we're a hundred percent committed to the XRP ledger. We always will be. And we would only do a stable coin if we thought it was good for the XRP ledger. But I think that's going to be an exciting step around the RLUSD. Like the second one, which I'm sure Monica was letting me talk about, but, you know, getting sued by the U.S. government uh, is not a fun experience. And I think it was pivotal for Ripple, but it was also pivotal for the crypto industry at large. And I think not just in the United States, but even globally. Mm. Uh, and, it, you know, the, we had sort of an opportunity to settle that without fighting the fight. Uh, we ended up deciding to fight the fight and it was expensive. It was certainly stressful. I was actually right before I got up here, I was reading on Twitter and somebody on Twitter was commenting how much it looks like Brad has aged over the years. It's like, well, the government sues you, it stresses you out. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, that was certainly a, 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 an important step for the company, but an important step for crypto at large. And I think I'm proud of the fact that we stood up to what I think is kind of a, a U.S. government entity that was being a bully and still being a bully to other entities. Uh, so, yeah. Thank you. Time is running out, folks. Make no mistake about it. The RUSD will likely be released this year. With regulatory frameworks as well coming very, very soon, it will be, in my opinion, the most dominant US-based stablecoin in this space. It will flip Tether, it will flip USDC Circle, you name it. It will become the most dominant, and we can already see levels of acceleration right now as 29.7 million RLUSD just got minted at the RLUSD Treasury. This is very, very big news again. Aiming to be launched this quarter, XRP to be used as an auto bridging asset, XRP will remain below $1 for much longer in my opinion. But let me know what you think. Come chill chat and learn more. The free Discord server get the next below. But remember, don't do short term, think long term. And I'll see you in the next one.